In this video we are going to be taking a look at percentages. First of all the goal for today's video is to be able to express real-world quantities as percents and also use them to solve problems. Now the essential question that we are going to try to answer throughout this video is how can you express real-world quantities as percents and use them to solve problems? Before we get into percentages and so on, there's a couple of things that you do need to understand about what a percent even means. First of all, it is important to know that a percent always means per hundred. So whenever we're dealing with out of per whenever we're dealing with percentages, it's always out of one hundred. Okay, so if we have eighty percent, we could even write that as a fraction, it could be represented as a fraction of eighty hundredths, or it can also be related to a ratio, okay, for example, 80 to 100, okay, so it's important to know that, so a couple things that we want to take a look at, so when you find percent, you are finding a part of 100, okay, it's always out of 100, so 60 percent, for example, means 60 out of 100, so you can write percents using the percent symbol, which is right here, Okay, so 60% is written just like this. Okay, now if you turn to page 251 in your books, okay, we do want to answer this first question right here. What number is always compared in a percent? And it's always 100. Now, throughout this video, you're going to be seeing a lot of these grids right here. Now, these grids are 10 by 10, okay, so each grid has a total of 100 little boxes inside here. Okay, and this will help you understand what percent means because it's using 100 because a percent always deals with out of 100. So let's take a look at a couple examples on page 251. Okay, first of all, it says example one, name the percent that is shaded. And we're going to take a look at this box right here. That's what they're dealing with. Okay, now. So it is important to understand that whenever we're dealing with this with these 100 grids that it is a 10 by 10 box, okay? In other words, 10 little cubes going down, 10 little cubes going to the right or 10 squares, I should say. So instead of trying to count every single one, we just know that each fully shaded column here it represents 10. Okay? And then there are 1, 2, 3, 4, five total columns that we see here that have every square shaded in. So we know five columns will equal 50. Okay, and then the final column we have one, two, three squares. Okay, so out of the 100, 50 plus 3, we have a total of 53 squares shaded in. Okay, so if we have 53 squares shaded in, that means we have 53% of this box shaded in. Okay, so we could just write 53%. Okay, this makes percentages very visual and hopefully concrete for you in that we have a 100 grid here, 53 of them are shaded in, so 53 out of 100 or 53% here are shaded in. Now let's take a look at example two. Let me erase this quickly. If we take a look at example two now, all right, now they're asking us to do the opposite. Name the percent that is not shaded in. Okay, so we can see easily that there are one, two, three, four columns that are not shaded in at all. Now, instead of just counting every little square here, we know that that, if, since it's a 10 by 10 grid, okay, that does equal 40. So four columns of not being shaded in equals 40. And then in our other column, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 that are not shaded in for a total of 47 out of 100. Now remember, percent means per 100 or out of 100. So 47 out of 100 or 47% is not shaded in. And we can even write this 47%. Okay, now we're going to take a look at percentages on a number line. At the bottom of page 251, it says use the number line 
tell what these percents mean, 0%, 50%, or 100%. Okay, so if we take a look at 0%, 0% actually means 0 out of 100, or none of the total. Okay, now if we're taking a look at 50%, according to this number line here, okay, 50% actually means 50 out of 100 or half of the total. And then 100% means 100 out of 100 or or all of the total. Now it is important to understand that whenever we're dealing with percentages it's not like we're always just dealing with for example 100 questions on your test or 100 um, people that we're trying to survey or anything like that. However the, this 10 by 10 grid hopefully gives you a concrete visual of what percentages look like, but we can also deal with percentages of a thousand people and so on. That does not mean it's not out of 100, but a percent always means 100% would mean the total amount. Okay, so if we're looking at this out of 100 or none of the total, but it is important with 50%. It, it could either mean 50 out of 100, or in a case that we have more than 100, okay, it would be half of the total. Or once again, 100%, if we have more than 100, it would be all of the total. Okay, so I don't want you to just think whenever we're dealing with percentages, it's just out of, you know, 100 little squares. Okay, even on a spelling test, you can get an 18 out of 20, okay, and that equals... 90%, okay, 90%, and that would fall underneath of the total, okay, not necessarily out of 100, but percentages always, the highest percentages that, percentage that you can get would be 100%, in case, unless we're dealing with extra credit. Okay, let's keep moving on through this video as we look at percentages. Okay, I want you to take a look at number one with me. Okay, on page 252. Now they're asking us how many whole columns and single squares are shaded. Okay, so it's important to take a look whenever we're dealing with this 100 grid. We always want to look at the whole columns first. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven whole columns are shaded in. Okay, and then single squares, we have one, two, three, four single squares. I'll just do seven C's here, seven columns. Okay, four single squares. Okay, so what percentage is shaded in? So we know that seven columns equals 70, four squares equals four. So 74% of my grid is shaded in. Okay, now if we're taking a look at what percent is unshaded, what we could do is let's erase all these little marks we have here. What percentage is, is not shaded in? Let's take a look at this. We have one, two total columns. And then with this other column, we have six that are not shaded in. So a total of 26 squares. So what percentage or what percent is unshaded? It would be 26 out of 100 or we could say 26% is not shaded in. Okay, now let's take a look at number four. We'll do this one together. They're asking us to shade the grid to, sh to show an example of 20%. Okay, so what we know, first of all, is that this is a 10 by 10 grid. So what we can do is we can just shade in two columns here. I'll just draw a line right down here. Okay, so two columns are shaded in. Okay, so I have 20 little squares shaded in out of 100, so that would mean 20% of my grid is shaded in. However, if I'm taking a look at how much is not shaded in, we have 80 squares out of 100, or 80% is not shaded in. Now what I want you to do is do number five all by yourself shade 86% of that grid in and when you press play I will have the answer for you. So pause the video now. Okay I want you to take a look at number five and make sure it looks just like mine. Okay we have 
86 total square shaded in. We have eight columns. And in the final column, you have six square shaded in. Now, if you did six from the bottom up or from the top down, that's completely fine. Okay, uh, but make sure you have 86 square shaded in. 86 out of 100 or 86 percent of those squares are shaded in. Okay, I want you to do number six through 11 all by yourself. Number six through eight, first of all, is going is dealing with this 100 grid right here. Numbers nine through 11 is dealing with this 100 grid right here. So I want you to complete these problems all by yourself. When you press play, I'll have the answers for you. So pause the video now. Okay, so here are your answers for numbers 6 through 11. Make sure that they match mine. And if you messed up on something, you may need to rewind this video and watch some of the previous activities that we did. Okay, let's take a look at numbers 12 through 14. And they're asking us to write the closest benchmark for the percentages. Now, it's important to understand the benchmark percentages that we're talking about. 0%, 50%, or 100%. So we're not necessarily rounding to the next 100 or anything like that. We're trying to round to the closest benchmark. So if we take a look at 48%, we need to think about is that closer to 0% or 50%. And we know right away that 48, pretty easy here, is closer to 50%. Okay, now 94, is that closer to 50% or 100%? We know that 94 is closer to 100%. And then finally, 14 is that, or number 4, 4%, sorry. 4% is that closer to 0% or 50%? Pretty easily, we see that that's closer to 0%. Okay, now let's take a look at number 15. In an election between Warren and George, Warren declared victory because he received 50% of the vote. Is he correct? Okay, so if you think about that, we know that he is correct. The answer is yes, he is correct. And now we know he is correct because 58% is greater than half, or 50% of the vote. Okay, so here's the explanation for you right here. He is correct because 58% is greater than half, or 50% of the vote. Now let's take a look at our essential question again. How can you express real world quantities as percents and use them to solve problems? And you can relate a real world quantity as a percent using a 10 by 10 grid and then compare its size to a benchmark 0, 50, or 100 percent. Okay, so this is how you find percentages using a 10 by 10 grid and just exploring percentages just a little bit. If you have any questions about this concept, please come and see me.